Hello and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another rally car build from Group A, which is a bit ironic because we're building a WRC car today. This is the Ford Fiesta RS from M Sport. And uh, I know what you're thinking, it's S1 class. How can we get it into A class? Quite simple, actually. It has an engine swap, which gives it 30, 75 less horsepower. The turbo, out, the turbo rally engine, Jesus, is... A wonderful sight to behold. I kind of want to do some rally lights. I know it's heavier and adds literally no benefit, but rally lights, of course, are kind of hideous. I'm not going to lie. Those are just sort of weird. And actually, I won't. They don't look very good on this car, to be honest. What's even more impressive, though, is you can get semi-slicks on this thing in A-Class. That was unexpected. Problem is, we can't get maximum tire sizes. So that might be an issue. In fact, we really can't get much of anything on this car. So we're going to put a race diff on. And then we're going to put... No, we can't. We definitely can't do any of that. Uh, we can't do any of that. Why don't we do that and then add a little more weight to it? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. 300 horsepower, not very powerful. 330 torque, not very torquey. 2,800 pounds, not very light, but semi-slick tires with a full, super weird, super insane WRC aero kit. I think this will be phenomenal through the corners. I just don't know if we'll have too much drag on the long straightaway. So the WRC car has to beat the Holden Tirana 240.3, basically. A 240.3, not a 243. I don't know how this is going to fare. We never really had anything like this before. The closest is the 2021 Golf R. But even that did not have the same aero kit this thing has. I think this is going to be a riot through the corner. And I also think it's going to be pretty good on the... on the jumps too, because it is on rally suspension. We didn't have race suspension to put it on. So we are going to have that going for it. Oh my god, that is so much corner speed. That's... We're actually keeping up with the Tirana despite having, what, 100 horsepower less? Through sheer corner speed. And we are a racing vehicle. So we have... I know we can upgrade the race brakes, but I'm pretty sure these brakes are no slouch either. You wouldn't have them on a full bore championship winning WRC car if they weren't good. So this is a kind of a meta build, I think, if I'm using that term correctly. I don't think it's actually going to beat that Tirana, though. I really don't. We are going to make up a lot of time in the twisty canyon section. Because we are just so good to drive, but I missed my breaking point like a fool. Locked up. I think we are going to make up a lot of time on that section, because we are so grippy. But I think our power weight ratio is just too bad. As meta as this vehicle might be getting it into A-Class, I don't think it's going to be any good. It's an interesting experiment, which is why I decided to do it. But I really... Wow, the brakes are terrible on this. I really don't think it's going to be that good. Even if my run wasn't complete garbage like it currently is, I don't think it would be beating that Toronto. I'm, if you're wondering why I'm hitting walls left, right, and center, it's because I'm now experimenting to see how fast I can carry corners, do what gears I should be in on the exit of corners. Just, just finding out, essentially. Just experimenting, since this run is a complete wash. Yeah, the brakes are terrible. I don't want to go too hard on them in fear of locking up, but if I don't go hard enough, it just skates into the wall and there's nothing to stop it. It's sweet. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a new one. Wow, this one is a complete watch. This looks really weird without a rear wing, by the way. You can kind of, you can actually see the Fiesta roots a little better without the massive WRC wing. But that looks 
wrong. It's like it, I mean, it is missing something. It's like it's missing something. And that something is a massive wing on the back. I should also note, while I'm talking about this, uh, it still treats, it's just visual damage, so I think it should still treat it the same. Oh dear. We're buzzing Luna at 130. We're gonna need to extend those gear ratios just a tad bit. Yeah, that was a run to forget. It, it can go so much faster, though I don't think it's gonna win. It's definitely not 12 seconds off the pace of the Tirana, that's for sure. So I lengthened the gear ratios a little bit, just a little bit, in order to not buzz the Luminar. And we're just gonna try to not muck up our braking points, really. That's the only goal. Just get a nice, clean, safe run in. No shenanigans. We do actually have, it does get helped by the four-wheel drive, so that is quite nice. They break late and just shocking it with full commitment. That is so good. That is not good. Why is it doing that? Why did you slide? There's no reason to do a slippy slide. I don't like the brakes on this car at all. I feel, I feel like I should have gone for better brakes instead of bigger tires. I'm not going to lie. Because they're just garbage. Apparently... Sebastian Ogier is the greatest rally driver of all time because he won two championships in a car that had literally no brakes. I don't understand why they lock up so easily. I, I get it's a racing car and they're supposed to be right on the edge, but come on, it's not a Formula 1 car here. And they just keep locking up. I'm not even hitting them that hard. And they just die. I thought the biggest problem with this vehicle would be the aero, the, the whole lack of top speed. It is a problem. But honestly, the brakes are worse. The brakes are just so bad. You can get it right, but it's really finicky. It's surprisingly finicky, actually. And I'm not sure I appreciate it. Ah, come on. Work with me here, Fiesta. Work with me just a little bit more than whatever you're doing now, because it's not great. This run will be a faster run, but it's still not exactly clean. I keep bloody sliding. Okay, that's pretty much as late as I dare on there. I thought this would be good. You know, it's a race car. It's got race chassis. It's a custom-built thing, only inspired by a Fiesta. You can't really call it a fiesta at all. And it just, it just isn't. It's good to drive, it's good handling, but the brakes just lock up so easily. I have no confidence in them. I need to build up that confidence and the car is not doing any favors on that aspect. We should at least not top out this time. In fact, I might have lengthened them a little too long, but we'll only succeed 132 miles an hour, so progress. 133, like I said. Ooh, that's as late as I dare through there. 245. I mean, it's not last. It's second to last. Oh dear, this is gonna be a high-pressure final run, because uh, those brakes are not fun. And what's incredibly frustrating is that I know this vehicle is fast. It's not fast enough to beat the Tirana. But it's fast nonetheless. And I just can't extract it because it locks up under the smallest amount of brake pressure. I actually reset my tune and then fixed the gearing again because I wanted to make sure, double check, that I didn't accidentally raise the brake bias or raise the pressure on them in the tuning menu. But no. I think it is just that oversteering, and I don't know why. Why is it so bad? Because once you get it stopped, it's once you don't lock up, they're very quick because they're racing brakes. But it's so easy to lock them up. Uh, that was close. And it just ruins your lap because this thing is all about the corner speed. And yet I can't take any of it 
because I don't have any confidence in the brakes. And you have to be able to slow down to take a corner. So that's the issue. Like here, for example, I had a counter steer to that corner because the rear end started sliding. And that ruins your apex and ruins your momentum. This is a momentum car because it has so much downforce. So my genius strategy of getting a vehicle with lots of downforce, a crazy arrow kit you would never be able to get on a normal A-class car, has been foiled by brakes that don't work. I will say praise, though. I've been criticizing this car a lot. But I will say praise about its gearbox. I know I had to tune it, but the gear ratios are phenomenal for this track. They don't really have any issues apart from the back straightaway, and then I can just tune sixth gear. But the sequential gearbox in this is so nice, it's so responsive and well-tuned. Honestly, if it wasn't for the brakes, I think this could be a, I got a 243-242 car. But it just means I can't carry the corner speed. Ah, it's frustrating. Very frustrating. There we go. Alright, well, you know, it's almost done. It's almost done. I'm a bit cowardly on the brakes now. I'm I'm braking pretty early because I don't want to under I don't want to slide wide so if I lock up I have time to catch it essentially and that's just disappointing man I mean, if this car wasn't fast because of the suspension of the arrow that's fine but because of some trivial crap like brakes that don't work that's disappointing it's a 244.7 all that work for third slowest. Yeah, it's at the right around the very bottom of the table between the Cadillac and the Chevy. Yeah, that's uh, really quite terrible. Huh. I don't really have much to say about this car, to be honest. I wanted to like it. I thought it would do pretty good, but I can't drive it. I can't. I can't get the consistency. It's not consistent enough to set a clean run in. Even that one, I slightly skid into the wall. It didn't really cost me any time, that incident, but everything else did. The fact that I had to break an entire car's length early just so that I could have time to catch it when they locked up. It's infuriating. But it is what it is. Sometimes things just don't work out. But that'll be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.